May this message be God's message. In Jesus' name, amen. Today I'm reading from the book of Numbers, the fourth book in the Bible, and chapter 22. Uh, this is uh, the story of Balaam and his donkey. It takes place while the Israelites are still uh, traveling through the wilderness, not yet to the promised land. And they encounter some enemies who uh, are determined to stop them. But they know God is with them. So here's what they do. Numbers, chapter 22. The Israelites moved on and set up camp in the plains of Moab, east of the Jordan and opposite Jericho. When the king of Moab, Balak, son of Zippor, heard what the Israelites had done to the Amorites and how many Israelites there were, and all the people became terrified. The Moabites said to the leader of the Midianites, This horde will soon destroy everything around us, like a bull eating the grass in a pasture. So King Balak sent messengers to summon Balaam, son of Beor, who was at Pethor near the Euphrates River in the land of Amah. They brought him to this, this message from Balak. I want you to know that a whole nation has come from Egypt. Its people are spreading out everywhere and threatening to take over our land. They outnumber us, so please come and put a curse on them for me. Then perhaps we will be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land. I know that when you pronounce a blessing, people are blessed, and when you pronounce a curse, they are placed under a curse. So the Moabite and the Midianite leaders took with them the payment for the curse, went to Balaam and gave the, him Balak's message. Balaam said to them, Spend the night here, and tomorrow I will report to you whatever the Lord tells me. So the Moabite leaders stayed with Balaam. When God came to Balaam and asked, Who are these men that are staying with you? He answered, King Balak of Moab has sent them to tell me that a people who came from Egypt has spread out over the whole land and wants me to curse them for him so that he can fight them and drive them out. God said to Balaam, Do not go with these men and do not put a curse on the people of Israel because they have my blessing. The next morning, Balaam went to Balak's messengers and said, Go back home. The Lord has refused to let me go with you. They refused. They returned to Balak and told him that Balaam had refused to come with them. Then Balak sent a larger number of leaders who were more important than the first. They went to Balaam and gave him this message from Balak. Please don't let anything prevent you from coming to me. I will reward you richly and do anything you say. Please come and curse these people for me. Balaam answered, Even if Balak gave me all the silver and gold in his palace, I could not disobey the command of the Lord my God in even his smallest matter. But please spend the night as the others did, so that I may learn whether or not the Lord has something to tell me. So, if God told him no the first time, why does he think he will tell him no again? Obviously, Balaam wants to go with him and curse the Israelites for the money they are offering. So, Balaam's hoping, eh, just maybe God will change his mind. But, of course, God knows what's in Balaam's heart. That night, God came to Balaam and said, If these men have come to ask you to go with them, get ready and go but do only what I tell you. So the next morning, Balaam saddled his donkey and went with the Moabite leaders. So God says yes. That's because uh, he has a lesson to teach Balaam. He, God still doesn't approve, but he's playing along with Balaam. Let's go on. God was angry that Balaam was going. 
and as Balaam was riding along on his donkey, accompanied by his two servants, the angel of the Lord stood in the road to bar his way. When the donkey saw the angel standing there holding a sword, it left the road and turned into the fields. Balaam beat the donkey and brought it back onto the road. Then the angel stood where the road narrowed between the two vineyards and had a stone wall on each side. When the donkey saw the angel, it moved over against the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against it. Apparently, Balaam doesn't see the angel, but the donkey does. And again, Balaam beat the donkey. Once more, the angel moved ahead. He stood in a narrow place where there was no room at all to pass on either side. This time, when the donkey saw the angel, it lay down. Balaam lost his temper and began to beat the donkey with his stick. Then the Lord gave the donkey the power of speech, and it said to Balaam, What have I done to you? Why have you beaten me this, these three times? Balaam answered, Because you have made a fool of me. If I had a sword, I would kill you. The donkey replied, I am not the same donkey on which am I not the same donkey on which you have ridden all your life? Have I ever treated you like this before? No, he answered. Which is more weird? A donkey talking or Balaam responding like it's perfectly normal for a donkey to talk? Then the Lord said, then the Lord let Balaam see the angel, standing there with his sword, and Balaam threw himself face down on the ground. The angel commanded, why have you beaten the donkey three times like this? I have come to bar your way because you should not be making this journey. Your donkey saw me and turned aside three times. If it hadn't, I would have killed you and spared the donkey. Balaam replied, I have sinned. I did not know that you were standing in the road to oppose me. But if you think it is wrong for me to go on, I will return home. And there's more to the story than that, but we'll save that for another time. So what's to learn from this story? Well, if God says don't do something, don't do it. Don't ask God for a question you should already know the answer to. Balaam thinks he's going to defy God's will. He can't do that. In the long run, God's will will be done no matter what. We can cooperate and be rewarded, or we cannot cooperate and uh, it won't be very pleasant. So, may this message be a blessing to you, and to God be the glory. Amen.